Well, gazing into the Rosetsky's eyes as we were during that changeover. Very different face he put on there. One of, uh, if you like, stern authority and thinking and planning. And maybe, just maybe, back in the match. He's on serve. 4-5. in a worst case scenario here really for Rosetsky considering what he's just been through he's just got back into the set he could have quite easily been starting the fifth serving whereas if he were to drop this game <laughs> you just don't know what's going to happen no that's right doesn't look like it on a service game when he's 30 love but I absolutely agree well how about this for a scenario he goes through the tie break and loses the tie break on a net court from the and then he starts his uh, Bjorkman starts the final set on his serve. That could be even worse. We could be here all night with those scenarios. 135 that last serve from Rosetsky. Yeah, well played, no problem. Terrific point. A stunning point. And look at the crowd and look at Bjorkman's reaction. The crowd are out of their feet. I have to say that the majority are on the sweet side. Good volley from Rosetsky. It was short. Look how quick Bjorkman was there. And again, not bad here from Rosetsky in terms of speed, but simple volley in the end. Massive point for both players. Rosetsky electing at that time to change rackets as well. Oh boy. Now tell me my house is on fire. Here we go. And to be fair, that really wasn't a second serve, it was a third serve, wasn't it? It barely got over 73 miles an hour. Set point. Played. He took that, though it might have gone out. Simple enough. Jeez. Quickest serve of the night as well for Rosetsky, 138. He's uh, really clocked it up in this game. It's got him out of trouble. I guess the adrenaline is flowing through the anger. difference in Rosetsky serving throughout the course of the match at the opening set he was just picking him off with a wide serve to Bjorkman's forehand he, he's lost that serve as the match has gone on that was traveling too 134 Six serve gets him out of trouble now it's Bjorkman's turn to be missing by whiskers, by inches or less. Well, I wouldn't have believed this scoreline now. Really, when Rosetsky started this set, he was just a he was just a mess of anger and rash hitting, and uh, you just had to feel for him because he was not really under control. But he's right back in there now. Great play by Buzz. Think he's pumped up. He's going to wear himself out with euphoria. Always did get very, very excited over great points, winning points. Good 
That's it. This is a good response here from Bjorkman. He'll certainly be feeling as though he's let his chance slip away to take this into the fifth. are strung very tight here in the US Open, not like Wimbledon where they're slack and that would have dropped in no doubt. This court still out on court 11, even though we're deep into the night session and the Arthur Ashe court where all the stars are playing tonight, that's packed as well. So Bjorkman leads 6 5. Rizeski will serve to take it into a tie break. Look at women up there who's come commentating after my first serve. And it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm missing it first, and she says, yeah, here comes another one. Okay. If she doesn't stop that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to her. Well, that's a very logical complaint. Is there anything in this match that hasn't happened? Hardly. We haven't had a bomb scare and uh, hadn't been a fire. The other night uh, we had a hamburger stall catch fire over in that. Uh, were you here then, Mark? No, I must have missed that one, Billy. Absolutely pouring out of uh, one of those apertures there where the crowd flood in. Nobody seemed to be caring. They just sat there with the smoke billowing around them. The play went on. Bjorkman there just complaining that there was a lady behind that apparently when he misses his first serve she's then saying and here's going to be become another miss serve and so uh, uh, making a good complaint and I'm sure that the uh, stewards here will be uh, taking care of her and Rosetsky dropping off a, a racket at the uh, stringer so perhaps preparing for a fifth set if he doesn't manage to hold on to his serve in the Time. next game. Well there's no reason now that he's calmed himself down and playing well again there's no reason why he can't hold this service game that he's just coming up for, and uh, there's a bit of uh, PR by, not exactly gamesmanship, but uh, good body language by Bjorkman. Look how fit I feel. It's like I once saw Michael Chang in the middle of a long five-set match with Edberg a few years ago. He was skipping at the changeover instead of sitting down. How about that for PR? Here we go at 5-6. And both these guys have served very well in the match. 61% for Rosetsky, 65 for Bjorkman. And that's why the sets have been that close. Well, he's not only serving well to win this game, but also to send a message for the tie break. I mean, he's very athletic. And he's got terrific control of the volley at the end of a jump. Kevin, there was no luck involved here from Bjorkman. He meant that all the way. You could see the racket just go back as he hit the ball to take the pace off it. <laughs> right back in the groove. It's like a flash of lightning when that goes past. Diagonally, you can barely see it. So this could be interesting, this tie-break. 132 from Rosetsky out wide. Uh, 
He's fired up. I have to say, I think the ma it's the match right here. If Rosetsky doesn't get this tiebreaker, uh, it's a long haul in the fifth. We will see. Here we go. Pity he wants to avoid these very top of the tape shots. A little, little bit more over the net. Tension on court 11. 8.35 in the evening here in New York. One all, tiebreaker, four set. What's that mean? 135 in, uh, in England. And Two are one. you still awake? Bjorkman. Well, certainly Bjorkman is with that passing shot, but Rosetsky paying the price for not following in the serve. He would have had a comfortable volley. And he finds himself down a mini break. Tough from here. And Bjorkman gets quite tight Three in situations like this. I'd like to see Rosetsky on every second serve here, try and use the chip charge and get in and force Bjorkman to make the pass. As he did earlier, so successfully. Yes, well played. Just enough pace on it to go faster than Bjorkman. a nothing volley in the end really was from Bjorkman. Bjorkman wasn't it look at where he hits this I mean he hits it right down the middle of the court good foot adjustment by uh, Rosetsky there back on serve oh unbelievable shot just a flick and a late flick at that A lot of seats to be had, and they enjoyed this one. Rosetsky didn't. And look at this from Bjorkman. Last second, I don't know how he whipped that from behind him, cross court. No way you could have picked it. And a good reaction from the Swede. 4 2, Bjorkman. serves as a half a chance for Bjorkman there's a lot of spin Bjorkman. on that ball from Rosetsky it wasn't traveling at all you got to force him to make the volley got to break one of these next two points so he's going to be facing set points That fallibility, fallibility of, uh, of Bjorkman in the very, very key situations he is capable of. Just a little bit of nerves, who can blame him?
four all, four Five set four, tiebreaker. I'd like to see Rosetsky just get go back to the normal play, chip that return and force Bjorkman to come up with a volley. Well, now, if he wins his two points, he'll have another match point. The trusty swinging serve from Rosetsky gets the desired reply from Bjorkman and an easy cutoff. I can see the scenario now. Another great serve. Match point. Put the Frighteners on, go to the net, volley. Good night. Tells me my scenario is not working. Just no acceleration on Rosetsky's backhand with the racket head there. I mean, both guys are so nervous and so tight right now. I mean, plenty of margin for error. Not, neither of them going for the lines, but Rosetsky, that's a poor unforced error. So this is set point Gorkman. <laughs> it's, it's almost inevitable. This tension just goes on and on. Well, if you're built as coach at that stage, you couldn't have asked for anything more. He makes his first serve, he makes his good solid volley to the Rosetsky backhand. That's what you would have asked, and Rosetsky comes up with the topspin backhand down the line. It's a tough one to take, though. And Bjorkman's got the long, long walk now to the gallows, because if he drops this point, he is facing match point. Every other point, match point, set point, match point, set point. You'll be thinking, don't do a double. that in it was it was definitely in I don't believe it the outside of the line the whiskers on the ball there's a little six. safe with the volley it's from Bjorkman it's in yes <laughs> what a great get from Rosetsky thank you third match point the other one was a week ago and he's won the match this is quite the most incredible ending. My initial thought, I'm afraid I'm British, and so is he, but my initial thought is uh, for Bjorkman, real, real sadness. He was pumped up. He almost deserved to win that match, but it was uh, a fantastic ending, you've got to say, for Greg Rosetsky. He's done it, he's come through, and he's come through not only a very, very tough match indeed, with credit, but he had the most awful scenes, really, unnecessary. He was uh, two-thirds of the way to the locker room, really, on warnings. But, uh, but Mark, it, uh, it's turned into an epic. This is the first epic of Wimbledon, this one, really, and it's turned into the most marvellous match. People who stayed up at home to watch it, I don't think they will have been disappointed. Not at all, Bill. It really was a great effort in the end for Rosetsky to come through. I mean... It, as you said, it was a disappointing scene in the middle, but it didn't take anything away from the, uh, the drama uh, of the match. Rosetsky played one great game in that fourth set at 5-3 to break Bjorkman back when Bjorkman served for the set. And that was really, and then his serve just kept him in the match all the way through. Uh, and then again at the end, set point to Bjorkman. Rosetsky comes up with the great backhand pass. He, he did well to get himself back under control. It was, uh, it was one of those frustrating matches for him. He must have felt as though he should have gone through. And there's Leif Shiras just about to interview Greg. But he'll be thankful he got through, and it, he scraped through in the end. He said he did, but a win is a win is a win. And uh, there he is in the third round. And as far as we are concerned here, he uh, has won an absolutely incredible match, really incredible from every standard. The play was fantastic. The tension was unbelievable. So there he is, he's through to the third round, he plays Zabaleta now, 
He won't know that. We know it. And he plays Zabaleta in the third round. If he wins that, then we uh, hopefully will have a match between, and I'm smiling right here at David Felgate, who is no doubt relishing the prospect. Um, uh, you know, we can have these British boys in the, uh, in the fourth round playing each other for a quarterfinal place. It's been a great night here. See you later. There's more, obviously, more tennis coming up because we've got the night session to start at quarter to nine, our time. But uh, for the moment, back to the studio for a break.